All right, what's up everybody? This is Scott here again with my next live trading video. Today is Wednesday, May 25th. And in this one here, I'll be showing you guys a very detailed walkthrough or demonstration of two earnings trades I'll be placing today. One with Nvidia and the second one in Snowflake, both of which are tech companies. And as you'll see here, I think both of these trades are very, very good opportunities for earnings trades, specifically for an options selling approach. And essentially for this video, I'll be recording it over the course of two days. So today on Wednesday, May 25th, I'll be showing you all the analysis and everything I'm looking at to actually enter one of these earnings trades. And then once the market closes today, that's when these earnings announcements will actually take place. So after hours, once those earnings figures do get released, the stocks will react to that announcement in some way. And then come tomorrow morning, once the market reopens, at that point, we'll try to take off these trades, hopefully for profits on each one. And the very cool thing with these kinds of earnings trades, as I'll show you in this video, is you don't have to be directionally correct on where the stock actually moves once those earnings figures actually become public. All we need is for the stock to move either up or down, doesn't matter, but within an expected amount. And so far for this past quarter, Q2 earnings basically, I believe I've made around eight or 10 of these kinds of earnings trades so far, and all but one of them has turned a profit. And that one losing trade was a loss of about 40 or 50 bucks. So of course, I'm not trying to imply that these kinds of trades always do work, but in my experience, if you do make these kinds of trades many, many times, then on average, you should see some positive results. Now, as always, before we dive in though, in case you are new to the channel, again, my name is Scott, and I just wanna let you know that you can also find me on Skillshare as well, where you can take my very in-depth classes on options trading or stock market investing. And I provided some links to some of the introductory courses of mine in the description of this video below. So be sure to check them out. And when you sign up for Skillshare using any of those links, you'll get a full one month free trial. Okay, so first up here, we're gonna take a look at NVIDIA. NVDA is the ticker symbol. And we'll go ahead and zoom in a bit on this chart. So again, this company here is in the tech industry. They're basically involved in the production of computer chips and graphics cards and things like that. And of course, as you can see quite plainly here in this price action chart over the course of this past year so far in 2022, this stock has really done nothing but just go straight down. And that should hopefully not come as any surprise because tech stocks in particular are the stocks that have been hurt the most in this current bear market of 2022. But fortunately for these kinds of earnings trades, the general trend that we're seeing in this case with NVIDIA going down almost every week or every month in a row is completely irrelevant, right? These kinds of earnings trades are really meant to be very, very short-term trades. I typically only hold them overnight over the course of that actual earnings announcement or maybe for a few days after that at most. So therefore, the most important thing to look at before making an earnings trade is the implied volatility of the stock. And for those of you who don't know, implied volatility is basically a measurement of uncertainty about a particular stock's future. And this measurement, which more technically speaking is an expected price range over a certain duration in the future, is used in part to price option contracts. So now we can come down here and take a look at the actual implied volatility for NVIDIA over the past 12 months. So right now the current value of implied volatility is just under 80%, which is much, much higher than usual for this stock. And this makes sense because pretty much every single time a certain company gets close to its earnings announcement, which you can see right here on the chart for NVIDIA with these two small icons here, as you can see the earnings are coming out today after hours on May 25th. Every time you get close to an earnings announcement, you will see an expansion of implied volatility and therefore also an expansion of uncertainty about the stock's future. Right, basically there is a lot of anticipation around these exact figures for Nvidia. Of course, you have analysts that can come out with predictions, which usually are pretty accurate as to what these earnings figures will be. But until the final numbers actually do come out and become public, there is a lot of uncertainty about this announcement. And as a result of this increased amount of uncertainty, the option prices for Nvidia are going to be very, very expensive. And that's because, like I said, implied volatility is used in part to price an option contract. And specifically, as implied volatility increases or as uncertainty increases, so will the price of an option. And then conversely, if implied volatility comes back down, then options become a lot cheaper. And so ultimately, what do you think is going to happen once those earnings figures do get released? All that uncertainty basically will go out the window. Now everyone knows exactly what's happening with NVIDIA and there's no more reason to be as uncertain as they are right now before the announcement. 
And so bottom line, what that's going to translate to for this chart here is once these earnings figures do get released, we should very soon after, perhaps tomorrow and over the course of the next few days, see a very large crush or contraction in this implied volatility chart. And therefore, along with it, a significant decrease or fall in option prices for NVIDIA, right? You can see the exact same thing happened back in their previous earnings announcement. Looks like at the end of February of this year, we saw an expansion of implied volatility leading into that announcement. And then once those figures became public, we saw a very large contraction. So ultimately, in theory, that means if we sell options right now before the announcement when implied volatility is very high, and therefore when option prices are very high, that means, of course, as an option seller, I'm going to collect a very large credit. And then come tomorrow, if we do see a large contraction in the implied volatility, and also assuming the stock does not move too much on that earnings announcement, we'll talk more about that in a minute, then I should be able to buy the options back for a much cheaper price. And in the end, I'll make the difference in prices from where I sold the options at to where I bought them back at, the difference there as my final profit. So now with all that being said, let's come over to the trade tab and take a look at the option chain for NVIDIA. And for this trade, we'll go into the June expiration cycle with 23 days left to go. Typically for these earnings trades, I like to be within 14 to 30 days until expiration. So we'll unfold this tab. And also, if possible, I do prefer the monthly expirations because they are the most actively traded. And so now we'll scroll down to the near at the money options. And so for this trade, I'm going to sell a short strangle, which is basically a combination of selling both an out of the money call option and an out of the money put option at the same time. And the reason for this is to one, of course, take advantage of the super high option prices. I want to collect credit on both the calls and the put. And then also, like I mentioned earlier, I do not want to have to worry about picking the direction of the stock once the earnings announcement actually happens, right? I have no idea, no insider knowledge as to whether Nvidia is going to go up or down once these figures do get released. All that matters is that the move itself is within the expected amount. And the expected one day move for NVIDIA is right here in yellow, plus or minus, up or down, by about $17.26 or so, 25 cents. This number here is basically what the market in general is expecting NVIDIA to move over the course of the next 24 hours. So basically for my strangle here, I want to pick my strikes on both the call side and the put side to be beyond this amount. Because the vast majority of the time with these earnings trades, the stock will move less than what's expected and that's what you want, but sometimes it will move more than expected. And so because I tend to be a more conservative trader, I wanna give myself a lot of cushion in case Nvidia here does move more than expected. So that's why I wanna pick my strikes to be even further beyond that expected move. But ultimately the smaller the move, the more contraction and imply volatility you will see and therefore the bigger your profits will also be. So of course the best case is for Nvidia to move by perhaps only three, four or five bucks, something small but still realistic. Obviously it's not gonna move by only one penny, but of course if it does move by the full expected amount of 17 bucks or even a bit beyond that, we should still see even a small profit come tomorrow with a decent contraction of implied volatility. So now if the current price of Nvidia is about 170 bucks and the expected move is rounding up, let's call it 20 bucks, that means my call and my put must be at least 20 bucks away on either side. But as you'll see here, I'm gonna go much further than that. So on the call side here, I'm gonna go ahead with the 207.5 strike call. So this one here is about a full 37 bucks away from the current stock price, and it also has a 16 delta, which is also roughly around where I like to be when selling strangles in general. And then on the put side here, I'm gonna go with a 135 strike, also about 35 bucks away to the downside. And this one has a 13 delta, so a bit less, and therefore overall, this strangle is gonna have a very, very small bearish bias to it, but still pretty much neutral. Again, I don't wanna to lean too directional in either way, bullish or bearish. All I want is to play for a contraction in the implied volatility and for a small actual move for Nvidia once those earnings figures do get released. And so with that being said, now I'm gonna go ahead and right click on the call option here and go to sell and then strangle. And here we go, that brings up a sell order down below to sell one contract of the 207.5 strike call alongside at the same time the 135 strike put option and total credit is going to be just over 500 bucks. That's really nice. And again, the reason why this credit is so high is because the implied volatility is also very high. And so I'll come down a little bit in price, see if I can get filled right away, maybe try 505 and then we'll go to confirm and send. And then last step is to take a look at the buying power effect for this trade. It's going to be about 1700 bucks, which is fine. Well under 5% of the total account value here. So then we just go to send. 
And there we go, just got filled and price improved to 512. Awesome. Great, so at this point, I'm officially in my NVIDIA earnings trade and there's nothing more I need to do at this point except just to wait for the market to close. I'll see what happens after hours once the figures get released and then come tomorrow morning, assuming NVIDIA has not moved by too much, hopefully we'll be able to take off this trade for a nice little profit. And then secondly here, I do wanna place one more earnings trade just like this on a different stock. So now we'll come back to the charts and we'll go to SNOW for Snowflake. So Snowflake here is also a tech company in the cloud computing space. And as you can see here with a price action chart, a very similar story pretty much for the past couple months here. Basically ever since the end of 2021, this stock has been on a very steady decline. But once again, this is totally irrelevant for this earnings trade because we simply want to take advantage of the super high implied volatility before the announcement and the practically guaranteed contraction that we'll see after the announcement. And I do say practically guaranteed because in rare cases where the stock moves by a huge amount, you may actually see implied volatility expand further. But again, that's a very, very rare thing. So briefly here, we'll take a look at the implied volatility for Snowflake. Just like with NVIDIA, we're seeing a very, very nice and obvious expansion of the uncertainty around this stock leading into the earnings announcement. And currently the IV is at a value of just under 113%, which is extremely, extremely high for an individual stock. So therefore I do expect the prices for Snowflake options to be very, very expensive. And so now I'll come over to the trade tab and take a look at the option chain for Snowflake here. I'm still gonna be in the exact same June monthly expiration cycle with 23 days left to go. And the expected move for this stock is even greater than for Nvidia. Right now it's just above 20 bucks, either up or down. So therefore with the current price of Snowflake being about 135 bucks per share, that means at a bare minimum, I wanna pick my strikes for both the call and the put to be 20 bucks away on either side. But of course, once again, I'm gonna go much further than that as well. So for the call side here, I'm probably going to go with this one right there, which has a 180 strike and a 16 delta. So once again, with Snowflake being around 135 bucks per share, this means my call strike is a full 45 bucks away, which is more than two times the expected move. So a lot of cushion built into this trade, and I can still sell this call option for around 270 bucks. And once again, that's because the implied volatility for the stock is so high right now. That allows you to sell options super, super far away, for still a decent amount in credit. And then for the put side here, I think I'm gonna go with the 90 strike put, which is also about 45 bucks away, and it has a nine delta. So once again, this entire strangle here is gonna have a very slight bearish bias to it, but overall still very, very neutral. And with that being said, now I'll go back down to the call option and right click, and then go to sell and strangle again, just like before. And here we go, this is the sell order to sell the 180 strike call and the 90 strike put for a total credit of just over 500 bucks again. Awesome. And so I'll come down a little bit, maybe to exactly 500 bucks. There we go. Go to confirm and send. Buying power effect is 1300 bucks. That's totally fine. So we'll go to send. And there we go, just got filled and price improved to 510. Awesome. And there you have it. So I'm now officially in both my Nvidia and my Snowflake earnings trades. And like I said, at this point, all I have to do is wait for the market to close and for these earnings figures to get released to the public. And then come tomorrow morning, once the markets here reopen, we'll see if we've made some money. All right, good morning, everyone. I'm back here again on the following day. So now it's Thursday, May 26th, and it's about five minutes or so before the market opens. And taking a look first at NVIDIA here, as you can see, pre-market is trading at about 162 bucks per share which is only about seven bucks below its closing price of yesterday at around 169. And if you recall, the expected move for NVIDIA was about 17 bucks, so we are still definitely within the expected move thus far, and that's a very good sign. So hopefully once the market opens, we will see a nice contraction of implied volatility and we can make some nice profits here. And then in regards to Snowflake, let's check that one out. So SNOW, this stock pre-market is around 117 which compared to the closing price of yesterday at around 133 or so, that means Snowflake is down by about 15 or 16 bucks, which is still within the expected move so far. Again, for Snowflake, the expected move was about 20 bucks. So again, with this trade as well, I do expect to see at least a small profit. And then also once the market does open in about two minutes here or so, I'm gonna let things just kind of sit here for about 10 or 15 minutes. And in doing so, I'm allowing a lot of liquidity to enter the market, which typically takes a few minutes. And then I also want some time to pass for the option markets on Snowflake and Nvidia to kind of adjust to the new prices and to adjust the earnings figures and all that. And then ultimately, of course, for implied volatility to contract. 
All right, so I'm back again about five or six minutes actually after the market has opened and the option markets for Nvidia here have already tightened up quite a bit and that's mostly because Nvidia is just a super, super heavily traded stock. So I obviously didn't have to wait very long for the liquidity to re-enter the option markets here. And now as you can see here, Nvidia is only down by about $1. So this is almost a completely unchanged stock after that earnings announcement. And therefore, if we come down here and take a look at this closing order, I've already gone ahead and set up, right? To buy back the 207 strike call option, or excuse me, the 207.5 strike call and the 135 strike put option. Just buying back the exact same contracts I sold yesterday. But as you can see here, the price of these contracts has already fallen dramatically. If you recall yesterday, I sold the strangle for a credit of well over $500. Now it's worth less than 300. So let's go ahead and try and buy back these contracts. I'll set a debit price for perhaps 290. I'll pay a bit more, see if I can get filled immediately here. Confirm and send and send. And there we go, just got filled and price improved to 283, awesome. So there we go, I've taken profits on my NVIDIA trade and we'll go over more of the analysis and kind of the aftermath of this trade here in a moment. But now before we do that, let's also take off my Snowflake trade as well. So now we'll come back up here and go to the Snowflake option chain. And then again, if you recall for this trade, I sold the 180 strike call alongside the one, or excuse me, the 90 strike put option. And since the market has opened, Snowflake has remained down by about 16 bucks or so, has not really moved yet. But looks like at this time, about 10 minutes after the market has opened, as you can see here with the bid and ask prices with the put option, the prices have definitely tightened up quite a bit. So now I can go ahead and place my closing order. So I'll go ahead and right click on this put option here and now go to buy and then strangle. And here we go, this is the closing order to buy back the 180 strike call alongside the 90 strike put. And same thing, the price of the strangle has fallen from over 500 yesterday down to only 290. Now the markets here are still a little bit wide, especially for the call options. So perhaps I'll come up to maybe 300 and see if I can get filled here. Go to confirm and send and send. Just got filled at 290, awesome. All right, so at this point, I'm out of both of my earnings trades on Nvidia and Snowflake. Now let's come back to the monitor tab and calculate the final profits on both those positions. And to make this easy, we'll go ahead and pull up the calculator here. So again, if you recall from my previous clip with Nvidia here, I sold this strangle initially for a starting credit of $512. So therefore the final profit on this trade is 512 minus the debit I paid to buy back these options, which was 283. So minus 283. And that leaves a final profit of $229, awesome. And again, keep in mind, this was just overnight, right? Like I mentioned, these are supposed to really be very, very quick trades. So that's great, 229 on Nvidia. And then for Snowflake, again, if you recall, I sold this strangle for a starting credit of I believe $510, basically the same as for Nvidia. So therefore the final profit is 510 minus the debit I paid to buy back these contracts, which was 290, so minus 290. And that leaves a net profit of $220, which finally, if we add that to the profit we made on Nvidia of 229, that means the total profits we made here on our two very quick earnings trades was 449 bucks. That's awesome. And once more, the reason why these trades worked out is because in both cases, right, the stocks move less than what was expected. And as a result of that, if you come back to the charts real quick, and first off here, we'll take a look at Snowflake. Again, because of that smaller move, we are already seeing a very nice contraction in the implied volatility. So in the case of Snowflake here, the implied volatility has fallen from a high of around 120% from yesterday before the earnings came out. And now just 15 minutes after the market has opened, it has dropped down to 95%. So ultimately a drop of only about 15% was all it took to take some very nice profits on this trade. And we'll see the exact same thing here with Nvidia. So we'll come back up here and go to Nvidia. And there we go, same thing with the implied volatility after the earnings came out. And of course, with that, all the uncertainty around this earnings announcement goes out the window and implied volatility starts contracting. And again, when the implied volatility contracts, that also crushes the prices of the option contracts for Nvidia and Snowflake here. And that is ultimately the reason why I was able to buy back the contracts I sold yesterday for much lower, lower price today. Now, one thing to note here is, of course, there's obviously a lot more room potentially for the implied volatility to contract even further. So if you wanted, you could hold on to these kinds of trades for a bit longer. 
But that being said, I personally don't tend to do that because there's always the chance if you do hold these trades longer that the stock can move much more than expected over the course of the next trading day or the next few days after that. And also the majority of the implied volatility contraction does happen the next trading day once the earnings figures come out. So again, in my opinion, there's not a whole lot of reason to hold these trades for much longer after that point. And then finally, the last thing I want to mention in this video is in the rare cases where the stock does move much more than expected and you do, as a result, see a net loss on your trade, the way I personally handle those situations is I simply cut my losses. I'll still buy back the contracts for a loss, remove the trade, and just carry on. Again, as I've said many times, these kinds of trades, in my view, are really meant to be very short-term trades. So whatever happens overnight, whether you have profits or losses or a scratch, just take the outcome of that trade and move on to the next one. And so with that being said, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And please let me know your thoughts or if you have questions in the comment section below. And don't forget, if you want to take some very in-depth classes on options trading or stock market investing, then check out my Skillshare courses. Links in the description of this video. And finally, if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up, drop a comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I drop new videos every single week, and you don't want to miss out. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.